is good, everybody, my Paper Moon fam. It's your boy, Paper Sin, back with another reaction video. This one is called The Impossible Economy Hopelessness in Today's Young Generation. Are y'all hopeless? Y'all feeling a little bit of hopelessness? What's going on? You wanna talk about it? I'm not a therapist, so don't, don't ask me. Let's just check it out. Let's see what's going on with this video. And uh, yeah. Yes. You're sitting in your room, scrolling through your social media feed, and you come across pictures of your relatives, friends, or just a random person boasting about their recent luxurious vacation or their newest Louis Vuitton bag mm. that costs more than your annual salary. You can't help but wonder if you'll ever be able to afford something like that. Unfortunately, the odds may be stacked against you due to the changing economic landscape. Welcome to the harsh reality of modern economics, where a comfortable life may seem like just a distant dream. I mean, it's not just that, because it's also like um, some of these people, depending on what some of these people are doing, you know, they might get influenced to, to, to Dubai to get shit on for money. Uh, but depending on what else these things that are doing, a lot of people are faking it. Like people are people have been uh, caught taking uh selfies are in like a fake like luxurious plane setting like it's literally just a, a cut of a plane that people are using as a backdrop but um obviously there's there's also different ways to make money now so i guess it depends on um what your path right now is and if that's probably why you're wondering if you can actually kind of live that type of lifestyle some of it, half of it is fake. Some of it is actually depending on your lifestyle or on your choices. And the, another part of it is basically just, it's, well, it all adds up into that, that whole <sighs> social media causing, causing depression type of thing. So. If you're feeling worried that you may never be able to achieve the same level of wealth as your parents, cousins, or friends, well, you're not alone. In recent years, a growing number of people have expressed concern about the widening income gap and the increasing difficulty for upward mobility. 90% of the wealth is right here in the top. Now, the upper middle class and the middle class, they share one piece. So these guys, they've got about 80% of a piece, they get 20% of a piece, and then the lower middle class, they've got 0.3% of a piece. Yeah, they got some crumbs there. There you oh, go, shit. that's what they get. And the poorest, they have no pie. In fact, they have less than, than, than no pie. They have, they actually have a bill for pie. They They're have in a pie bill. Debt. They owe pie. With the added impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, no this topic is no longer just a subject for economists, but has become an increasingly pressing issue for individuals just like you and me. Young generations born between 1990 and 2005 who are navigating an ever-challenging economic landscape. Also, real quick, this is a gr this whole pie thing is a great visual visualization for what for exactly what he needed to describe. Also, also, just gonna throw that out here because I see a lot of I see some videos where some women are like they they want they they want their man to be making you know 100k at least or 200 500k a year minimum that would be you know what i'm saying like this huge fucking pie thing over here like oh no never mind this would be this little slice right here when most people are t are taking these other three plates right here you know what i'm saying anyway i just like the visual the visualization of what the economy is like right now no so way. according to that survey by Bankrate, nearly one in three Gen Z workers are not actively saving for retirement. Mm -hmm. And they're not the only ones. According to the survey, millennials who are saving say they feel like they are behind. Another level, and it's having an impact on how confident people are feeling about their finances. The amount of student loan debt Americans hold is at a record high, and much of it is shouldered by millennials, people mm. now in their late 20s and 30s, which means that young people coming along behind them in what's called Generation Z, those born after 1996, are facing some tough choices about how to pay for college. Shit, don't Skillshare. You are now watching the White Obsidian channel. 
There are so many other ways to actually uh, the learn The global what you economy has undergone a significant transformation over the past few decades, especially Besides after the 2008 financial crisis, which affected job opportunities and income potential for individuals and families worldwide. This has led to a growing divide between the rich and poor, with many people struggling to make ends meet. You can check out our video on the top right or the link down below if you want to know the full story of the world-shocking financial crisis that occurred in 2008. Struggling for a in better the past, life. the American dream often included a comfortable life with a nuclear family, where a typical man would have a 9-to-5 job that could support his wife, two children, a pet dog, a car, and a house. Mm -hmm. The idea of the American dream was that, with hard work, one could achieve a comfortable life and a bright future. You can buy so much with so little back then, it, it seems. But, then, but now you need at least two or three of those jobs. By, uh, by us, one single man, one man would need two or three of those jobs just to still be able to do all that. Uh, depending on where, obviously where he's working and what his uh, degrees and shit like that are. But that's fucking crazy. Just to live comfortably. Like we just, we did earlier, um, I think yesterday maybe, a video on why, why millionaires don't feel like millionaires anymore. And like, this is, this is still kind of related to that, so. Damn. However, in today's generation, both partners need to work even harder just to make ends meet. It's no longer enough to rely on just one job to provide for a family due to the skyrocketing cost of living. Many jobs simply don't pay enough to support oneself, let alone a family. The American dream has become more of a challenge to achieve for many, and the gap between the rich and poor continues to widen. As a result, many young people have turned to side hustles, multiple jobs just to make ends meet. Working a 9-to-5 job is no longer enough to ensure financial stability but rather just to avoid sleeping on the streets. It's not uncommon for people to work on their side hustles after work and on the weekends, which leaves very little time for rest and or relaxation. Hi. <laughs> the idea of the American dream has shifted for this generation. Instead of a comfortable life with a nuclear family, the dream has become to simply be financially stable and not live paycheck to paycheck. Okay. This is a stark contrast to the past and highlights the challenges faced by young people in today's economic landscape. With that being said, the cost of living has increased dramatically over the past few decades, while salaries have failed to keep pace with these rising costs. A study by the Pew Research Center found that the cost of living has increased by 67% since 1990, while the median hourly wage has only increased 18% during that same period. Additionally, Shit, the cost no of housing has skyrocketed in many areas, making it difficult for young people to afford their own homes. Now you could obviously say something like, well, just pay people more money, but then like uh, the, the people who own the businesses that are, start, that are starting to pay more, uh, people more money start to lose more money and they don't want to do, they don't want to do that because then they can't afford the luxuries of that that they're able to afford right now and it, and it it's a cl that climbs to the top because they'd have to start you know, they'd have to get the the resources where they get their where they get the resource their resources they would have to ask them to charge less even though they're probably already charging less but um so and they don't they don't want you know what I'm saying Nobody's going to want that to trickle down and do that. You know what I'm saying? So it's, 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 a, it's a losing battle trying to make that happen, in my opinion. Also, also, one more thing. I think it's funny. And it's just, okay, this is just funny. But people like this, this uh, stream right here, this Twitch stream right here named Hassan, will wear something like this, make the rich pay, while dressed like this, and living in a $3 million house and driving a luxury car. I just think it's funny. I have nothing against the guy. I just think it's kind of a... Uh, what's the word for it? It's ironic? Ironic? Yeah. It's ironic. <laughs> 
A study by Harvard's Joint Center for Housing Studies found that in 2021, the first full year of the COVID-19 pandemic, 47% of renters in the U.S. were cost burdened, meaning they spent more than 30% of their income on rent. The study's mm. findings mm. highlight the alarming reality that almost half of U.S. renters are living on the brink of financial disaster, unable to withstand any unforeseen circumstances due to living paycheck to paycheck. Hmm. Damn, the belief that a college bruh. education is the key to financial success Why? has been a deeply ingrained idea in modern society for decades. Now it's a lie. Unfortunately, many young people in today's world are discovering that the reality is far from the truth. Not only in the United States, but all over the world, young people are facing an uncertain future despite obtaining higher education. Okay, it's not a complete lie. It just depends on what you, what degree you choose. You have to get something that's going to pay very well. And then you have to fight for that job because every, a lot of other people are going to be fighting for that job as well. So, The Damn. cost of education continues to skyrocket and students are graduating with staggering amounts of debt that they will have to carry for years to come Hell and no. probably won't be able to pay off across their lifetime. And we're starting with the price of college, a cost that's supposed to be an investment. By 2020, an estimated 65% of jobs are expected to require at least some college training, but that training has never been more expensive, with the average cost of attending a public college up tenfold since 1965. As someone who holds a master's degree in chemical engineering, Damn. I know firsthand that the situation is made even more complicated by the fact that having a college degree is no longer a guarantee of financial success. A master's degree in chemical engineering, and yet he's doing YouTube instead. He's probably getting paid. He's probably doing YouTube full time instead. I wouldn't be surprised if he was getting paid more than what he uh, he, he would have been as a master's in chemical engineering. That is crazy, man. No, even no wonder um, most U.S. Uh, children want to be want to grow up to be YouTubers and streamers and stuff. While in China, they want to be I think astronauts. Yeah, that's crazy. And with higher education, the job market is extremely competitive and graduates are finding it difficult to land well-paying jobs that match their education level, falling deeper into financial depression and doubt while people who don't have a degree were able to land a job with similar salary ranges. Mm. Many of today's wealthiest individuals, including Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, and Steve Jobs, all dropped out of college and went on to achieve great success. Yep. This challenges the myth that a degree is a surefire path to success, and young people are beginning to question whether or not obtaining a degree is worth the financial burden. According to a report by the College Board, the average cost of tuition fees as of 2022 was $10,560 for in-state public colleges and $37,650 for private colleges, Damn. resulting in the average borrower owing over $37,000 right off the bat, even before landing a job. Despite a staggering total student debt loan of $1.76 trillion in the United States, society still places an expectation on individuals to obtain higher education in order to compete in the competitive corporate world and attain a more desirable lifestyle. This reality has left many young people feeling disillusioned and hopeless, wondering if all of their hard work and financial sacrifice was for nothing. The pressure to succeed in today's world can be incredibly daunting, especially when the promise of financial stability is no longer guaranteed when compared to how our parents were decades ago. Despite this bleak outlook, it is important to note that education can still provide valuable skills and knowledge that can be applied to many different areas of life. Right. However, it is crucial to recognize that a degree alone is not a guarantee of financial success any longer. Next. It's almost as if um, becoming uh, being an entrepreneur, risking being an entrepreneur in some business and trying to start trying to start your own thing, your own thing is more beneficial than like going to college and accruing college debt and being expected to pay that off. And maybe you might get a job for your degree. Maybe you won't. Who knows? But it's, it, is, it is seeming like, I don't know, man.
like colleges is, is the the Do need you for ever it. find yourself scrolling through Instagram, seeing your friends, many okay. influencers, or even your cousins living a life of luxury while you feel like you're stuck in square one no matter how hard you try? It's a common experience for many young people these days. We see a lucky few people posting pictures and videos of their lavish homes, expensive cars, and mm. extravagant mm. vacations, mm. all thanks to that business they created, or see, maybe that Dogecoin they bought back in 2018, while we Investment. still struggle to make ends meet. And then there are those who comment on our situation, telling us that we just don't work hard enough, that we're not hustling enough, that we're not ambitious enough. They send us links <laughs> and emails about courses that promise to teach us how to get rich, only to find out that the course costs close to $1,000. This is bro. just another unguaranteed product that these so-called gurus are trying to sell. It's frustrating to say the least. It can make us feel like we're not good enough, like we're not doing enough, even though we're trying our best. And when we see others who seem to have it all, it can be easy to fall into a downward spiral of envy and depression. Also, those gurus, they probably started off where you started off or where, uh, you know, anyone else started off. But their whole being a quote unquote guru, they probably read a few, a few books and decided that they were going to make their own book and sell it. And that's how they actually uh, started making their money and just told you that they started making it some other way or shape or form or something that may or may not be true. Most likely it's not. Unfortunately, some people's desperation to make more money can lead them to fall into financial traps that can be detrimental to their financial well-being. These traps may include making risky investments, overspending on unnecessary luxuries, or taking on too much debt without a plan to pay it off. Mm. Engaging in these activities can result in a situation known as financial suicide, where a person's financial situation becomes so dire that it may be difficult or flat out impossible to recover. But here's the thing, the world's economy is not set up to make everyone rich. Some mm. people will rise to the top, while most will be stuck at the bottom. And while hard work and ambition can certainly help, there are other factors at play, like generational wealth, systemic inequality, and the rising cost of living, as well as the opportunities that are given to you. Transactions between generations. Generational wealth refers to the wealth and assets that are passed down from one generation to the next. Yep. For many families, the accumulation of wealth is a process that takes years, if not decades, to achieve. However, even if you work hard and save diligently, it is possible that you may never be wealthier than your parents simply due to the changing economic landscape. One major factor that affects generational wealth is inheritance. When your parents pass away, they may leave you assets such as property, investments, or cash. However, this inheritance is not guaranteed, and in some cases, it may be limited due to the increased life expectancy or other factors. Additionally, inheritance may be subject to taxes, which can absolutely reduce the overall amount that you receive. Unless you're from the British royal family. <laughs> wait, wait. King Charles what? Unless King Charles doesn't have to pay inheritance tax on the Queen's private estate worth more than seven hundred and fifty million. Seven hundred and fifty million. Man's ain't gotta pay no tax on that. <sighs> Yeah, there are loopholes in uh, taxes that the rich abuse, not, not abuse, but they, but they use, they smart, they intelligently use in order to not have to pay taxes themselves. Like even here in the States, you know, with like, um, I think uh, Trump said something about how, how he did, how he doesn't have to do, uh, pay it. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's through things like donations and um, owning and having your businesses being owned from out of the country. Things like that, I believe. Uh, Excuse me. But yeah, that is, that's a, that's, nah, that's a little something, something. Unless you're from the British royal family. 
but yeah, generational wealth is, is definitely something I think um, everybody should try to pursue. Because let's say you're only pursuing just for you to be wealthy, just for you to be a millionaire. But let's say you fall short and you don't quite make it. So if you, but if you aim to be generational wealthy, then you'll do things that will, that you will hope will grant you generational wealth. And therefore, if you fall short while doing those things, then you may just become very wealthy instead of, you know, barely wealthy or, or whatever. But it's kind of like a step above. If you aim for generational wealth, let's say that's the highest step. And just, you know, barely being a millionaire is like the lowest step. But you aim for generational wealth and you fall in the middle step, which is just very wealthy or something instead. You know, so you know, I don't know. I think people should aim for a generation if, if they I mean, if those who whoever is aiming for any type of wealth. I think they should aim for generational wealth instead of just barely wealthy or anything like that. That way they if they fall short, they'll still end up as very wealthy, you know. Verdict. The current economic landscape poses a significant challenge for young people trying to build wealth. The combination of a changing job market, rising education costs, limited access to generational wealth, and the increasing debt and cost of living makes it an uphill battle. This challenge is not unique to the United States, but a global issue affecting young people worldwide, and it will only get worse in the decades to come. Though investing in education and career training can help, it's important to acknowledge that the economy is not designed to ensure everyone can become wealthy. The system is set up to create winners and losers, yep. leaving most people at a disadvantage and potentially leading to feelings of depression and hopelessness. The current economic landscape presents a daunting challenge for many young people, leaving them feeling disillusioned about their future prospects. The cycle of increasing debt, rising costs of living, and limited access to generational wealth can feel like a never-ending spiral of financial struggle. It's no wonder that many young people are left wondering if their efforts to build a better future are ultimately futile, resulting in making poor financial decisions that exacerbate the situation and lead to financial suicide. It's almost as it... Oh. It's almost as if those the how the like he said the uh, system was set up so that there will be winners and losers. It's almost like the winners are already setting up so that their families in the future are said are also set to win. They're just set to win. They're just already born to win. You know what I'm saying? So it's up to everyone else. To try, and it's, the system's not fair. Let's get that first. Let's get that right. The system's not fair, but it's still up to everyone else to try and somehow, some way, make it to from from the bottom to the top. Like there are ways for people people to do that. It's just very. It can just be very difficult sometimes, like more than sometimes. But yeah, some people are just standing at the top waiting to kick you down, but some people will end up making it regardless and shout out to them because hopefully uh like i said the system's not fair so hopefully in the future something you know the people who are working towards it they're able to uh make it happen you know I'm, i know damn well i'm gonna be working towards it. i'm trying to trying to make sure uh my gender my family's 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 family is good so you just gotta set it up it's it's going to be difficult, isn't it? It's nothing, nothing worthwhile is easy to obtain. That being said, um, as always, the link to this video and the link to this channel will both be in the description below. So be sure to check them out. The link, the YouTube channel, again, is called White Obsidian. So be sure to visit White Obsidian. Link to the channel will be in the description below. And uh, yeah, while you're there, don't forget to do those three things that I like to ask you to do. And like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell for more videos. Yeah. And you know what it is after that, in case I don't see you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Peace and much love to you.